Hello. Hi, Miss Perry. Hi, how are you? Good. Is it all right? Yes, okay. Hey, uh, how did you do on your computer? Did you get it up and going? Oh, no, good Lord. I mean, he brought it over, and I I got it, everything, but I couldn't get my game. <laughs> you couldn't get your game? <laughs> are you trying to do games, or you mean yeah, you Yeah, I like to play that first class solid <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, I like uh, something more like, I do like Halo. Free huh? You like Free Cell? No, what's Free Cell? Well, that's another game everybody plays. Oh, I play Halo. I like what they call first-person shooters. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, well, it's like a gun type thing. Well, see, I can't, I don't really get out a lot, so, yeah, you know. Well, I taught myself on the computer. Anyway, but, but I, the other night I found it on my own computer, so I was excited, but I can't use a phone when I'm on the computer. It's like driving me crazy. Are, are you all up with your email and everything now? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want you, if you get a chance, to please go in and check out my site at Elvis2001.net. Right. I'm very proud of it. I will do that. I think I have already. Yeah, I, I, I have a pretty cool... Um, yeah, it, is, it is really, it's really nice. Uh, but he's bringing it back tomorrow, so I'll be fine. Oh, you, cool. You'd have called a half an hour early, just Miss Myrna Smith just left. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> See now, I I Get put in I put an email into them because they just came back from a uh, tour, didn't they? Right, and they're leaving again tomorrow. Oh no! Yeah, they just came up for breakfast. Oh, that's um, how's she feeling? We hung out in bed watching Jerry Springer. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, I love Jerry Springer. Oh, we crack up. Anyways, okay. Um, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm not feeling too bad today. Uh, I was kind of looking forward to this, and I'm looking the forward. Here is so bad. It's so windy. And it's so dry that everybody's sinuses. I, I sound like, I, I'm telling you, I sound like J.D. Sumner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I talked to Ed last night. Banja? Yeah. Yeah, he's a nice man. He's a great guy. I love Ed. He's a good boy. Yeah, I, I just had one of his, uh, he sent me a beautiful photo, yeah. one of his big beautiful of many, and he signed it for me, and I just got a nice frame for it today, so that's oh, kind of cool. Yeah, he's a good boy. I like Eddie. Yeah. Well. yeah, and he speaks nicely, basically about everybody too. I mean, he's not one of those who goes around and trashes everybody, which yeah. is, which is surprising. I mean, I've done a lot of interviews now, and so what are you doing? Writing a book? No, well, I I am writing a book with well with Sue McCaslin. Her and I, we were writing a book on the Sahara Tahoe, and that's coming out in two thousand and seven in Germany. The Sahara Tahoe? Yeah, because you know the. Uh, the International Inn or the Hilton's been done to death, but nothing's really been done about the Sahara Tunnel. About, his, about his, uh, his, his, his performance up there, maybe? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, and, uh, but, you know, Vegas has been done, but done to death, and uh, Sue McCaslin has got a lot of, uh, and we bought a lot of uh, photos that have never been released of uh, Elvis at the Sahara. So, you, know oh, that I, you know that I, I never had a picture of myself with Elvis? I never, in 17 years, I never thought that I could have a picture with you. We took one picture in Las Vegas. Right. And uh, he didn't like the way he looked, and so we didn't take it. And then I went to Hawaii, and I went to one of the museums there, and they had the picture hanging on the wall. Obviously, the uh, camera women sell the pictures that they take to these museums. Huh. So I got that picture that was of me and Elvis and Linda Thompson. Right. And that was the first picture I had. Then, then a paparazzi gave me a picture that he took of us in a limousine. I have that one. Huh. And then uh, one of my friends, was dating this producer, and he took it up for the 68 special of me, because I, I was sitting next to Elvis, yeah. and he put, made a picture of that, but I never thought to have pictures. I, I, you know, I, I was with him every day. I didn't think that I could have a picture with you. But no, was that because you didn't want to? I didn't think about it. I saw him every day, I mean, you know. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. Other people that were with him a lot, too, they said, you know, we didn't think like that. Well, Joe has lots of pictures and so does Jerry Shelley. Yeah. I never thought that way. Right. I, mean, I never thought I was going to lose him either. So. Yeah. No, God, Lord, none of us did. Really? Now, so you came You came from England. Uh, when did you I come did from England? When I was 10, darling, in 1954. Uh-huh. And then I, and we uh, lived in Chicago for a year. Well, actually, we lived in Buffalo, New York for a few weeks. My auntie lived there. Mm-hmm. We went to Chicago, and then we came to Los Angeles. And I met Elvis when I was 17 in 1960. Now, uh, it was. It said that you saw him in his uh, roles? Yeah, I was driving down the street with a girlfriend. We were in this old Buick clunker. <laughs> we were going to a fraternity party, and I said, but there's a lost wife. Let's see who's in it. And I said, oh, that was Presley. That must be different. I, I pretended I didn't know who he was. And he rolled down the window. I was very attractive, and I was there. He said, hey, girl. I said, gee, you look familiar. Do I know you from somewhere? And he started laughing, because he knew that we knew who he was. How could you miss Elvis Presley? And he said, pull over. He was going to record um, Flaming Star, the lead song from the movie, at Radio Recorders on Santa Monica Boulevard. Wow. And we pulled over, and him and our personalities just bonded. And we, I made him laugh. You know, we always got along well. And, and he invited me up to the house, 
and they adopted me, and I, I never left Philly Pass. You know, you're, you were smart. That's probably why how you got in close, because you were smart, and because it seemed like everybody wanted something from him. Honey, I never took anything from the man. That's I great. His money. I, when I cut his hair the first time, he gave me $750, and I threw it back in his face. I said, I eat here every day. He bought us beautiful gifts. He shared everything he had with us. And we all came from nothing. We got to live like millionaires. Mm -hmm. We had maids and cooks and limousines. And loose. I wouldn't take his money. And I was, he didn't have a mom or a sister. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Jewish mother, you know. And I was like, I was very honest with him. I would tell him the truth. And that's why I was close with him. And, and he respected me. Yeah. You know, and, he, and he treated me like his little sister. Well, we, I've heard that before where they call you um, little sister. Now, you were 17 when you met him. Were you a fan? Huh? Were you a fan? I was never a fan. Really? No, I wasn't a fan at all. Not at all, but, you know, you became a, I, I became a fan of the man. Yeah, see? I thought you were going to say that. Uh, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was such a wonderful boy. Uh -huh. He was a young man. He was 25 years old. He was a wonderful son, and he was an incredible friend. And he was such a good guy. You know, you have to realize, this man came and be, become a 19-year-old truck driver overnight, became superstar and supposedly super stud. He wasn't. He was a baby. He was a baby, very shy. And he came into this life, and that's why he had the guys around him and the people around him, because he was a prisoner of his own fame, you know? See, I always thought that. I always thought he couldn't live. Huh? He, I always thought that he couldn't live with his, his own monster, with his own fame. He couldn't. Well, Do you think he would have been just as happy not as being out? It wasn't a monster. I mean, he got, I mean, his life changed completely. I mean, he was a poor kid, you know? Yeah. And when you'd sit down next to him eating food, he'd eat off of your plate, but you could never touch his food. He'd break your arm because his cousins used to come when he was poor and they'd eat his food. Wow. I mean, I mean he's still, he came from a poor southern background, and he, he enjoyed his life, but, you know, he knew that we all came from nothing, and he shared everything he had with us. Right. Everything. Do you, you think know, he would have been too. happy not to be Elvis Presley, the superstar? No, he liked being Elvis. He did. He liked, being Elvis. He liked that part of it. But he also was the Elvis that we... That, 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 well, the guys knew him differently than the women, you know? Uh-huh. He, he, he related to women differently. I mean, he used to talk baby talk. Really? Yeah. He was a baby. He was a, he was a sweet, sweet woman and, and a wonderful man. He was. Now, I was always told he was a gentleman around women. Oh, absolutely, always. And he loved his mommy, you know? Yeah. And he learned that. He learned that. I mean, he, he, was, he was good as gold to me, but I gave him a lot of help. Did you? Hell oh, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't hold up. I still do. Yeah, I, 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 listen, those guys know. I got a mouth on me, you know, but I tell the truth. You know, I told the truth, and I told him the truth. I didn't like something, I told him. Well, that's kind of what my friend Sue and Sandy said, that you do, that you, you don't mind coming up and say, look, this is the way. I do. I tell, listen, I saw this guy in Las Vegas before me, uh -huh. Paul Casey, and he was doing these thrusts like a stripper, and I went up to him and said, listen, excuse me. I said, that is embarrassing. I said, Elvis would never do that. I said, and it, it's offensive, and don't ever do it again. <laughs> really? I, well, I don't care. No. Now, listen, this is my friend you're talking about. Exactly. And I, I don't care if they don't like it too bad. So you were at the 68 comeback? Yes, yeah, so uh, I went there with Priscilla and, and, uh, and Johnny Esposito and Sandy Schilling, and, and they said, go, go sit next to Elvis. So he was, he was nervous, you know. They said, go on, go sit next, down there on the stage next to him. And every time he looked over, he'd smile at me. And I, I had my, my hair in a fall with all this black eye makeup on. I'm like, God, it's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it must have been... He's years old now, you know. I know, it's an incredible show. It must have been incredible oh, it was fun. to be there. It was fun. You know, I've always tried to pick out Priscilla. Well, Somebody said she was up in the stands, yeah, she or in the stands, yeah. she was in the stands. But if you can pick me out. What do you think? Actually, I don't know which one you have. Do you have the DVD? Uh, no, I have the uh, the. Uh, I've seen your. You did another, not too long ago, a uh, uh, overseas uh, uh, interview, and I saw a photo that you must have sent this person because I I've seen you sitting next to the stage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. That very was fun. pretty. Very I, pretty. Yeah, well, that <laughs> still looked good. <laughs> so now you were always friends. You were never a girlfriend. No, just a, no, just friends. I mean, he when the girls would come out, he'd say, they'd say, this woman, she's always said, this is Patty. She's part of the family. She's Patty, part of the family. And he wouldn't let anybody near me. I, you know, I was like in my 30s, and guys would hit me, and the Elvis would say, Patty's family, she doesn't fool around. I said, Elvis, go around. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis, please. So he was like a big, he big was brother. My, he was my brother. He was my big brother. All those guys were, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of them don't like each other and everything, but listen, they brought me up, you know. We, we were a family, we, you know, we all grew up together. Well, you must have did a lot of crying together and a lot of happiness together. We and did a lot of laughing. Did you? <laughs> was he a, 
I mean, I'm sure you're going to say he was. Was Elvis a nice man? Oh, he was. Are you kidding? You can't. You can't explain how good he was. He was so. He was such a good boy. I, I call him. Oh, they're my boys. You know, they're all grown men now. He would have been seventy now, but they were my boys. He was such a good boy. I'm telling you, we all, we had different religions. We were Italian. We were Jewish. And, you know, he respected everything, and he shared everything he had. When he'd buy something, everybody got something. Yeah. You know, if he bought, everybody. He was so good to everybody. And all he wanted in return was your loyalty. Right. And, 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 your, and your love and your respect. And, that, and that's what I gave him. How about I Vernon? I never go on payroll. Yeah. I said, I'm not going on payroll. I want to have my own life. Really? So I, I'd leave work every day, go to his house. And when, because he was in Los Angeles then doing all the movies. Mm-hmm. I'd go up there, I'd have dinner, and stay there till like one in the morning. He said, don't leave. I, I got to go to work the next day. And, but I, and the weekends, wherever he was, you'd either fly me in or limo me in or something. Palm Springs, Las Vegas, I went every weekend. I, I'd work only Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And the other times I'd be with him. Well, you days. must have been exhausted. No, nah, I had a great time. I was coming young. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm exhausted. Now, you know, I, I didn't start tra- I stayed in the background for 25 years. I didn't do anything on Elvis. And then Myrna's boyfriend, Steve Christopher, do you know him? Uh-huh. Well, he, and they, he was in town, and they said, come and have a drink with us. I said, nah. They said, so I said, I went down. And he said, come on, Patty. He said, I'm going to go do this in Benton, Palm Springs. It's a, a fan call. He said, do it with me. I said, I don't do those. Come on, just try. And I was terrified. And I went down there. And they were asking questions. And I said, well, I know the answer to that one. Yeah. And the people were so glad to hear these stories as a, that I started doing it. Mm-hmm. I do mostly for charity. That's exhausting. I just got back. I was in Portage, Indiana for the Special Olympics. Mm-hmm. And then I was in Florida for a, a, a Presley House, which is like for battered women. And it's, I'm not used to it, you know. Myrna, I mean, bless her heart. I mean, that's, they make a living. They travel around the, the world. Yeah. And I, I can't sleep on an airplane. No. My legs are bad, you know, because I'm a hairdresser standing for 45 years. So. And it's just hard. But, but the people are the nicest people in the world, and they love the stories. I make them laugh. I saw only positive things about Elvis. Right. And, that's, and, that, and, and it, it gives me something to do now. And it's a wonderful experience. I'm really, really enjoying it. Well, you know, you're lucky to have been a part of his life, and uh, I've heard nothing but nice things about you, and that, you know, Thank you. That's and that you. you didn't take from him, you didn't want from him, and Never. Never. and was he always trying to give you, was he always trying to give well, you a he, car? he put his hands behind his back and say, pick a hand, he'd give me a, a diamond ring, but if we go shopping, we go to the jewelry store, everybody got something, he, he was very generous, I mean, yeah. he, he knew that who we were, and we, you know, that we were loyal to him, and and that's what he loved to do. He loved to give, you know. He, listen, he gave more with his with his talent and his presence on stage. And, you know, I mean, I, I used to I used to love watching him sing. You know that I I was I say I'm the only Jewish girl that knows every gospel song there is. <laughs> I never was able to see him. Um, I was 16 years old when he passed away, mm-hmm. and I never had a chance to see him. And I always kind of thought that God kind of screwed me out of that. Yeah, well, you know, but, you know, you watch all his shows. I just I was watching last night the uh, the gospel year. That's that was my favorite times when they'd all get around the piano and sing gospel. I bet you must have been incredible. I walk into my shop in Beverly Hills. And I'm singing "Lead Me, Guide Me." Yeah. Patty, you're a Jewish girl. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but he used to laugh because I love all that stuff. You know? Did he? He? Oh, well, everybody says that he enjoyed the gospel more than anything. Oh, I else. love gospel. If he was, and they asked me if he was alive today, what would he be doing? He'd probably be doing gospel. You think so? Oh, yeah, he loved gospel. I always thought that maybe he'd get into uh, being a producer, because he had an incredible well, ear. I'll tell you something. Before Elvis died, and years ago, he, he was in, you know, he was in karate, right? Right. And Ed Parker, in fact, they just sent me a picture of that I never even remember taking. It was Ed Parker, Elvis, Linda, me, Jerry Schilling, and Jerry's first wife, mm-hmm. and Dave Hebler. And, I, and I, I, never, I don't even remember that picture. That's another picture I just got. <clears throat> but he loved karate, and and they were just starting to do karate movies, and he wanted to produce a karate movie, but then it never happened. And they passed. You know, it's funny that you were talking about that because Dave Heveler, I was just on the phone with him a couple of nights ago, and he was talking about that karate movie yeah. too, and he they told me about the person that has he has the uh, interviews from that, and he asked him, "Are you ever going to do anything with that?" And the guy said, "No, probably not." And what a shame! Yeah, really. Because look, 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 with Jackie Chan, right? Karate movies like the biggest thing, and yeah. he's a total Elvis fan, you know. Jackie Chan was? Oh, he is. Wow. I mean, he's he's the biggest uh, guy in China, but he's a total Elvis fan. And I, I was I was went to the gym one day, and I was walking with my trainer down the street. We saw Jackie Chan, and he said, "Go tell him who you are." He said, "He's an Elvis." I said, "Are you kidding? I'm sweating here." <laughs> <laughs> was Elvis that good at? At karate? Yeah, he loved it, yeah. He said, yeah. You know, a lot of people now say, you know, wow, well, it's because he was Elvis. Who's going to no, say no to Elvis? He loved it. 
I said, you break boards. Are you kidding me? With my, I said, I'm a hairdresser. He said, you can do it. Put your body into it. Put your hand this way. I broke a board. I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> no, Dave Hebler, too, said that he was very good. And he, he, he put a lot into karate. Very How he were, karate very big in the country, too, because of his love affair. Yeah. How was uh, uh, Vern, Vernon? Vernon was okay. You know, Vernon didn't hang out with us a lot. He was mostly in the office in Graceland. So you went to Graceland a lot, too, besides being a... Christmas. Were you? Huh? Now, see, I have to do a uh, Christmas radio show uh, next week, and I do an Elvis Christmas. Do you have any Elvis Christmas stories I can share? I just did that with Sirius Satellite Radio. Really? Yeah, it was uh, Doc. Uh-huh. But then I don't know. If I, I, he, then, he didn't call me back. He probably got mad because I was telling him, like, when Elvis is, oh, you know, listen, Ed, I, gotta, I can't help it. I'm Patty. And I said, what's one of the songs he loved? I said, he loved that. That's the first time I ever saw your face. Right. You sang that. I said, I don't remember. You're the disc jockey. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I offended him. I know. Well, I only know of. Uh, I think. I he mean, loved, I, he loved Christmas. I, I, I was telling Doc. I said one time he, he 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 surprised everybody, and he was just doing a joke. He gave everybody McDonald's certificates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I've heard that one. That's yeah, true. But no, he he just loved being there. You know, I mean, and his, all his family, all his mom and sisters were coming out, and all his dad's family, and he'd hang out checks. He was a very generous. He did a lot for charity. Mm-hmm. And it was beautiful. I mean, that's when Graceland was gorgeous. They had the Graceland Church next door. That's why they named it Graceland. Mm-hmm. Now it's the corporate offices. Right. Now it's Disneyland. Yeah. It's not a man's home anymore. No, it's horrible. I, I went there. I cried. It broke my heart. It must have been very hard for you. Uh, well, uh, aside from the emotion, but just to see what they've done. Oh, my God. You know? Mm-hmm. You know, you've been there, right? Oh, yeah. That, that big, big white furry bed? Yeah. To sleep in that bed. <laughs> really? And the red, the red outfit he's, that they have standing him, but that was the one I happened to picture with him and, and myself and Linda. Oh, the one that they called the Burning Love. Uh, I don't know which one. It yeah, is. yeah. A lot of the fans named all of his suits and everything. Um, I, I, I always makes me Are sad you to talk. No. Oh, okay. So you'll remember what I tell you. Yeah, basically. Okay. Um, do. When did you find out? And because it always kind of makes me sad when I talk about this. When did you find out that Elvis had passed? I was. Right here in the bed in Los Angeles. It was nine o'clock in the morning, and I got a call. You're gonna make me cry now. I'm sorry. I'm I sorry. Called from Memphis to let me know before I saw it on television. And I called. In fact, Jerry Schilling wasn't working for Elvis at that time. And I called him. And I said, "You won't believe this." I said, "Elvis died." And he, in fact, he's writing a book. And he said, I, "I'm putting down that you called me." And Marty was in town, and I, we, and my husband freaked because I freaked out. You know, I was married at the time, uh-huh. and we could. And I ran over to Linda Thompson's house, and and the phones were ringing, and she was making. I, I couldn't get a flight. And then it was like, it was so bizarre because nobody knew where we were going to stay. And Joe kept calling, just come, we'll figure it out. And my husband went ballistic, he said, you're not going. And you know something, Ed, I'd rather remember him come in life than in death. Right. So you didn't go to the funeral. I didn't go to the funeral. And, and, and that, that kills me because that would have been a good closure. Sure. But uh, as I say, my memories of him are more important. I, I yeah. don't want to I, I, couldn't, I couldn't look at him dead. Yeah. When was the last time you had seen him? Well, he was in, he was in Memphis most of the time, and I, I'd gotten married. I talk about the phone. I saw him about maybe six months. Mm-hmm. But before that time, before I got married, I was with him every day, you know? Yeah. It must have been some great times. Oh, we had so much fun. I mean, I mean, it was so crazy. Listen, those guys are funny. I mean, the personalities all click. We used to have, we used to laugh our butts off. Uh-huh. Everybody knew what everybody was thinking. Uh-huh. You know? And he was a baby, you know? I mean, there's so many funny stories. I have. People keep bugging me, write a book, write a book. You should. Um, I'm surprised you haven't. You know, everybody's... Elvis's plumber, my God, has written a book. You know why? I... Thank God, you know, I'm financially okay. I don't... I don't make a living off of Elvis. Mm -hmm. And there are things that the the publishers want to hear, the nasty stuff, and I'm not willing to do that. You're absolutely right. And I'd rather go around like I do, even mostly, as I say, it's for charity. Sometimes I get paid, which is great. Uh And tell my stories to people that really love him. And make them laugh and and share my stories with them. I... I'm, I'm just... Another book. I can't even. I can't write. I can't. I print. <laughs> yeah. See, but I want to hear the good stories. I don't want to hear the. You know, Elvis was a man. He was a man, and he made mistakes. I make mistakes. Of course. And he was a man. Well, I tell funny stories. I'll tell you a funny stories. Okay. We were in Palm Springs, right? And we we go every weekend, and and they'd always have girls over and everything. So we decided, no girls. We're going to just hang out in pajamas and watch television. So I'm, I'm wearing his uh, pair of emergency soap pajamas. I'm wearing uh, blue, blue, blue pajamas. He's wearing blue bottoms, the yellow top. And we're eating pizza. And all of a sudden, the doorbell rings. And it's a bunch of girls. And Elvis goes, quick, 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 come in my bedroom. He says, change 
pajamas. I can't have two different colors on me. He <laughs> was, so, was so cute. Goodness. Uh, Very sweet. Do you... Some stories I can't tell you, darling. Uh, do you see many of the guys at that, or...? Oh, I, I, I talked to Joe when I was in Vegas. I, I was working in Vegas doing that, that show, and I saw Joe. And Jerry lived right up the street from me. Jerry Schilling? Uh, yeah, and I was in, uh, I was in Port, um, Pigeon Forge. I saw Charlie. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's not many left, honey. You know, Richard? No, I know it. I know it. And uh, the other ones, like Dave Hepler, I, I saw him, but he was not really part of our family. He wasn't really in there very long, was he? No, he wasn't. Yeah. And then Gigi just got killed. Campbell. Right. Yeah, I'm hoping. I only met Jerry Schilling once, and I'm hoping to be able to. I, I've sent him emails and that, but Jerry's a nice guy. Jerry's a, Jerry's a good looking. He still, yeah. I, I met him in Vegas last year. Actually, I was there with Al Devorn, and actually the night before Al passed. I was with Al Devorn uh, at that, uh, that event when he, when he left us when he got killed. Really? Yeah. I was, I was with him the night before at the Craig Parker show with the J- Jerry Lee Lewis opened up for him. And I met Al, got his autograph, we talked a little bit, and oh, then no. he died on his way back from L.A. Well, you know, it was on his way back from Palm Desert. Is that what it was? Yeah. We were in Las Vegas with Paul Casey's show, and then we all went down to uh, Palm Desert to the Trump Casino. It was Ed and me and Al and um, the Paul Casey show, and uh, on the way back, that's when he... He loved talking. He, that, that man knew everything about Elvis. It was incredible. Well, he knew about the Colonel, he never really hung out with us either. You know. I mean, oh, no, no. He was. He, he worked for Colonel Parker. Right. No, how were you Ed, with the Colonel? Ed, was, Ed, was, Ed worked with, with the Colonel too. I mean, they, there's a lot of guys that that know Elvis, know stuff, but they didn't live with him like we did. You know. Right. Now, how were you with the Colonel? Uh, the Colonel never really hung around us personally. That was business. Right. You know? I think I, I mean, I'd see him in Vegas, and he'd, you know, he'd always respect me and say hello, but uh-huh. he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't hang out at the house. Now, you were the only, um, I know how it's been said that you were the only female Memphis Mafia member. Yeah, that's what they say about me, but then I was, then uh, Mr. Sonny West told me I, I'm not allowed to say that. I said, whatever makes you happy, just give me a break. Really? Yeah. When did you get your uh, your TLC? The day that they, when, when he had the first ones he ever had me, I, uh. And Beverly Hills, and it's never been off my neck. I want you to know. Wow, it never will be. That's incredible. But nobody else, half the girls don't have theirs. They all got new ones. They either sold them or, or you know, mine's never been off my neck. And it was weird because I was with Al Devorn actually in town in a, an event in Cold Springs one time, and there was a psychic lady there, and she said, "I always wanted to talk to you." I said, "Okay." So she says he wants to say thank you. He's the only one that never taken the necklace off your neck. Wow, weird. that must have floored you. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> The, the hair stood up on my arm and it was like this thing. Now, do you believe in that? Because no, I'm, I'm a very big believer of that. I am too. And then she said to me, she says, you're going to, she says, you're going to go on a river. Well, I was going to Louisiana and that's why I was with, with at Dave Hepler at Sandy Pichon's house and they wanted to take me on a bayou. But I, you know, I'm Beverly Hills. I thought, they're going to take me on a boat. I thought, like, yacht. It was like the boat. Yeah, I'm not going out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm very close with uh, Sandy. You know, Sandy's yeah, been through an awful lot lately. I know she has. I talked to her. Yeah. I told her to come here when they have the hurricane. Yeah. I like Sandy. She's a lovely, lovely lady. She loves Elvis. You know, boy, if there's any, if there's any way that you could, if you ever talk to Linda Thompson, that's one autograph I don't have. I don't, I don't, really, I don't. You don't see Linda Thompson anymore? No, you know, she lives with the, you know, she was married to, what's his name? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've asked Sam, and Sam just, he just forgets. I know. Sam, he's a good boy, though. Sam's a good boy. Yeah, no, he's done awfully well. He's a good guy. And I always saw Jerry Schilling did, too. not well, too, you know. Huh? He's got a wife that's kind of ill, too. Who? Sam. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But he's a good guy. Hmm. Now, um... Uh, it's funny, I just got a nice piece of memorabilia. It was, it's not Elvis, but it's, uh... It's Colonel Parker. I got a hold of some uh, snowman, uh... Memorabilia, which I was quite proud to find. Do you do you have a lot of? Did you ever get into like collecting or anything? Or no? no. You had the man. <laughs> I, I really. You know what? I, I still have. He brought me back beads when he did Paradise Hawaiian style, and he brought me a sari when we went to the Self Realization Center and some beads. But I'm, I mean, I have my. I, I had loads of jewelry, but when I went to Palm Springs one week, and someone set me up, and and they came to my house and drilled myself safe out of the ground, took everything I had. That they knew that Elvis had given me a bunch of stuff. Oh my God! I have my TLC that's never been up. I have my diamond ring. I have my diamond earrings. That's it. All I've got left of what he gave me. But you know, I have my memories, and that's more important. Yeah. That's more important than things, Ed. Believe me. I bet you it must have been absolutely. I mean, how many concerts do you think he'd seen? <laughs> Hundreds. Yeah, every night, two nights. 
And you never got tired of watching? Night, huh? You never got tired of watching? Never. It was different every night. Yeah. You know, because of the audience, but I never got tired of watching him. He was a different guy on stage. That's what he loved doing, you know. Yeah. You know, um, some of uh, the security guards had told me that there was threats and that on his life. Did you ever know that any of that was going on? I was, I was there when they, uh, they had a threat on his life. I tell that story and everybody starts crying. We were, we were at the Hilton and, and they went and one of the menus, they had a hole in his heart and said, I'm going to kill you. And they called the FBI. Uh-huh. And we were all there and we were like freaking out. Don't go on, don't go on. They had an ambulance in the back. He kissed everybody goodbye. He said, I'm going on. He, and we were afraid. They had the FBI in the, in the uh, orchestra. They had the FBI everywhere. And we were like, Pat, and he said, and, but he stood sideways. He said, I'm not going to give him a big target. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. And it was like horrible. And in the middle of the show, some guy yelled, Elvis, Elvis. And he, and he got down in the crowd. He said, yeah. He said, sing, love you, tender. And like, it freaked us out. It was horrible. And he, and he was crying. He said, why would anybody want to hurt me? You know? Oh, yeah, I don't, you know. <laughs> Just look at the guy who killed John Lennon. I mean, John Lennon was a sweetheart. Yeah, we were there one day, and there was a bunch of karate guys sitting in the front row, and they all jumped on stage trying to get him. Thank God Red and some of those guys were strong, you know. But, you know, leave them alone, you know. People, they got jealous, I don't know. It's too bad. Are you enjoying my story? I do very much. I am enjoying them very much. I, I've been looking forward to this days. I didn't. I just, you know, I was trying to, you know, I had a little list here. I wanted to make sure, but I, I like having a conversation with you too, You're because welcome. then. Now, were you going to put it in like your fan magazine or something? It's going to be on my website, and then, uh, like I said before, a lot of them get picked up and get put into different other fan uh, magazines. Uh, you know, but you know, I'm done. I'm just, I did Andrew Hearns. I did a really nice. Thing. But you know, I mean, the stories don't change. It's like, it's like. 17 years of my life but I can't change them you know they're the same I don't want to be repetitious but right. they're honest stories well can what do you th- I mean can you believe that Elvis is still as popular now or what do you the man's a phenomenon honey there never was never will be anybody like him and you know what and I see these young kids that are coming to the con- you know I go I, sometimes I see the tribute artists and a lot of people don't like them but you know they give a little bit of Elvis that people never got to see as long as they don't think they're Elvis Presley right. but they honor him you know? yeah but there are those who forget who they are well then, well then, don't don't do it around me because I'll kick their ass. Because <laughs> there was one that I saw, and I, I'm not going to say his name. And all of a sudden, he got an attitude. He didn't say hello to me. He didn't say hello to Myrna. And I, you know, I, I right away I went. I said, Hey, listen, I hear you're doing very well, but don't forget who you are. You're not Elvis Presley, and if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have a job. So remember that. That's and you're I absolutely help, right. That, that's why Elvis loved me, darling. He liked you being that way. Well, because I, I was honest. See, it just seems like some of the other guys, after talking to him, seemed like they were a little afraid of saying anything to him. Well, I, I didn't have anything to lose. I wouldn't go on payroll. That's, that's right. You didn't work for him. I wouldn't. I, I, you know, but I did it. You know, I did. I was there, you know, but I did it because I wanted to be. He seemed like the type that you could really hurt his feelings easily. If oh, you... he was very sensitive. He was a, he was a baby. He was a baby. You see, it's hard for another man to, you know, he's, he was a baby. He was sensitive, or he... Well, listen, you're, you're talking about a bunch of guys who got l- lucky to live with all this person. They had girls coming out of their ears. I mean, a lot of them were... Yeah, and a lot of them said to me, Joe, we got the leftovers. And he says, yeah, I'm telling... That's true. But they weren't good-looking guys. They, they lived a great life. They worked hard, you know, but... They did? I mean, it was 24 hours. They didn't do anything, but it's 24 hours, you know? And it was what he wanted. When he was up, they were up. When he went to sleep, they went to sleep, you know? It had to have been an awfully hard... Uh, well, they, you know, they wanted to be with their girlfriends, but they had to be available. But that's what they did, you know. Uh-huh. And I, I, there's nothing wrong with that. But he was, he was a good boy. He was, he was so what are you doing now? I, I work two days a week in Beverly Hills. I still cut hair. So my clients won't let me. They say I can't retire until they die. <laughs> do you and have... I, I do you do... Uh, mostly men. I do, I do like, like big, I like producers, directors. And stuff. Oh, there you go. They're very nice to me, and I do, like, Spielberg's business manager. He's the one that sent the guy up to help me with my computer. And I do, I, I do, I've had people I've been doing their hair for, like, 30 years, 40, 40 years, you know. Uh-huh. I do that two days a week, and then I, uh, I do some Elvis stuff. I travel. I'm, I leave on January 5th. I do an Elvis cruise with Lou Vudo, who's a wonderful, oh, yeah. wonderful guy. I yeah. love Lou. He's become like my brother. He's, a, he's an angel. He's, he's a good good man uh-huh. do you remember any of the family like uh, back, back at the Graceland days do you remember I mean I was friendly at one time with Donna uh, I no Donna I just heard not so great things. yeah I know and I was friends with her a few years back and then I was kind of told to separate myself from her because yeah, you know I don't know and I've just read that she's done a lot, a lot of, I, but she was, she, was a bit, she was a little kid when Elvis was alive you know and then right. Jerry Presley actually Patsy Anderson was managing him and he, I don't think he was, he was probably two when Elvis died right I don't know him I, I knew Billy, and I knew 
TV, and I knew that's Campbell, you know. You know, you got to watch yourself in the Elvis world. You really do, because you only, it, you know, and, and that's why I think everybody likes you, because you don't want anything from Elvis. I mean, you're not living off of Elvis. So you're yeah. only telling wonderful stories. That's what I want to do. I want to share, I mean, I just want to share the love that he gave us, you know. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to one of the guys, and I interviewed him, and I, I, I got off the phone, and I'm going, I can't, I can't print half of this stuff. I'm like, can I print this? Well, a lot of them are very bitter. Well, one of them is. Why? Bad. Why are they bitter? I don't know. I mean, they, they had a wonderful life. They had a life that only... It. They're just crusty old bastards. What can I tell you? You know, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I well, I don't know. I'm, I'm get, Dave Hepler? No, no, Dave Hepler. Larry Geller? No, he's another idiot. Then I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> oh well, yeah, no, I haven't had it. You know, and I love Marty, but he just he just won't let you love him, you know. Yeah. He's tough. I would love to be able to uh, to interview. I mean, I've been able to interview Larry quite Geller. a few of you. Larry Geller. I went to beauty school with Larry Geller, you know, and I and I always say I was not. I'm not known as Elvis's hairdresser. Larry was Elvis's hairdresser. Right. I did his hair for the Aloha. He never looked better in his life. I did his hair for special occasions, but Larry, Larry. There's another story that I don't want to get into. I say I don't put anybody down, but Lee yeah. and Larry's lived off the bridge. I don't, I don't want to get well, it. Well, I wouldn't. Pr I wouldn't print it. I mean, but Larry, you know, no. Larry's called me. Larry's full of shit. Larry's called me three times, and I don't know what I don't know what to believe, what not to believe. And other friends of mine, they said, you know, Joe, don't listen, don't believe everything. Joe said that. No, I've had people like Sue said, and Sandy Pichon says, Joe, don't believe everything. Well, I tell the truth. But listen, I don't want to put anybody down, Joe. I mean, Ed, I'm not that way. But uh, don't believe everything. Really? Yeah. Was he that close with Elvis toward the end? I mean, a he spiritual was, advisor? I'm on job, spiritual advisor. Listen, Larry Gillows lived off of women's all his life. He was a hairdresser. He did Elvis's hair. But then all of a sudden, he became a guru. And he, and he was into this, and he was into that. Now he's into, like, the real heavy Jewish religion because he married a very religious Jewish girl that supports his ass. So, <laughs> but was, was Elvis looking for spiritual he was looking guidance? For he was looking for something. You know, he, he, didn't, he didn't understand why, why he, he was who he was, you know? Uh-huh. He couldn't figure it out. Why me, you know? Right. And why all these riches? But see... All this metaphysical... But see, he had all these riches, but he had... He was lonely. He was lonely. Of course he was lonely. You know? I mean, so you take the good, you take the bad. I mean, you know, listen, I have nothing bad to say about Larry Geller. I just didn't believe in all the nonsense. And he, I mean, he, he was professed all this nonsense, and he wasn't. Uh, he yeah, was, I mean, he's got. He's been talking to me and telling me how Elvis was so sick, and he was um, just so messed up, and he was just well, so. He helped. He helped. <laughs> really, he helped. Um, Elvis was sick, but listen, you have to realize. I mean, there's a man that's like locked in his house 24/7. You can't go anywhere. And those days, the '60s, everybody took Quaaludes, everybody took a sleeping pill. You know, right. it was party days. You know, none of us, none of us were perfect. You know? Right. But then, but uh, Elvis, I mean, his tolerance was different. If you're stuck in the house and have the energy that this man has, you see it. He can't sit still. Then he would take more than anybody else, and then he'd take something to go to sleep, uh -huh. and, got, and then he'd take something to wake up, and his kidneys got shot. Right. That's why I blew up like you. Well, see, that's why I worry about. I take a lot of pain meds. I know you do, and um, they, my doctor keeps saying, "Look, you know, you only get one set of kidneys." I know that's true. You yeah. know. But you know, we all, but it wasn't. It wasn't. No, it was no different than anybody else in the '60s. You know, everybody did that. Right. You can't blame them. But as I say, when you're stuck in the house, you got 50 people outside the gate, 24/7. You can't go anywhere or do anything. And when you have the energy of a young man, it's very difficult. Yeah. Do you, can you think of any uh, other funny stories that you, because I kind of need to fill a, I mean, I won't put anything negative in, I, and I, you haven't said anything negative about him or negative anything about any other guys or anything, but can you think of a story that I can... Well, I tell you that he, he, he told me that, uh, you know, he always wore a, a, a Jewish star. In a oh, yeah. You know that, right? Yeah. Because he didn't want to get stuck in heaven. I'm he not get shut out of heaven on the technicality. <laughs> Do you have any... F and then he said to me, he said, Patty, I know what God's name is. I said, what do you mean you know what God's name is? He said, I'm telling you, I know what God's name is. I said, all right, Elvis, what's God's name? He says, his name is Hallowed. I said, how'd you get that? He says, right here in the Bible, it says, Hallowed be thy name. <laughs> do, you do you have any funny stories? I like being on the Lee Murray or anything? Or? Mm -hmm. no, no, just when we... The first time we were in Palm Springs, and he said, I got a surprise, and he rented um, Frank Sinatra's Learjet. Right. And, you know, he just loved the look in your face. You know, when he got new toys. Yeah, exactly. And he said, I'm going to surprise you. We got on this plane, I went. And he just, he just, whenever he gave you anything, what made him happy was the look on your on your face. Uh-huh. Not the gift, you know. I mean, it didn't mean, but the look on your face, the, the pleasure that you got out of it. That's what made him happy. Funny, you know, I don't know, there's so many funny stories. 
So you know when he used to watch football, he'd sit with a football helmet on. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> he was crazy. His nickname was Crazy. Uh-huh. And when he saw Robert Goulet on television. Uh-huh. You know that story. Was that true that he actually yeah, shot he out? He did. Because Robert Goulet was singing and he had no vibrato and I was freaked out. He shot the television. He shot the television. Did he have a bad temper when he... He could have a temper. But, but no worse. He'd get over it bad. He'd go get over it first. Uh, fast. But no worse than anybody else? No worse than anybody else. No, yeah. See, everybody, they've always played that up. And uh, Listen, everybody has a temper. You know, you get frustrated. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, the man couldn't go anywhere. We'd go out at midnight to, like, Drifty Drug Store because when nobody was there, he'd buy keychains, flashlights. You know, we couldn't go anywhere. We, we, we went when he did Harem Scare Him. Uh-huh. We went to find Valentino's grave when we went to the cemetery. Really? Yeah. And we found out that we could walk around there in the daytime and nobody was there. I mean, it's, it's very sad. That, you know, you couldn't go Really? There. He missed just being able to go out and just walking around. Honey, if you saw one of the Backstreet Boys walking down the street, you wouldn't know who he was. You can't miss Elvis Presley. Right. You know? You're absolutely right. I mean, there's no... As I said, there, there never was and never will be anybody like that. But he was awfully good to his fans. I mean, did he, he basically good, didn't he run the... wonderful. Because they put, they put me up on this stage. Yeah, they were wonderful. Yeah. They were wonderful. Listen, I got to go. Hey, I uh, think I was just getting ready to say thank you very much. Did you enjoy it? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. And, and I if hope you're well. And keep in touch, okay? I will, honey. And you take care of yourself, all right, darling? Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye.